Directors Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman are no strangers to Oscar nods, winning Oscars three decades ago for the documentary films The Times of Harvey Milk in 1985 and Common Threads in 1990, films widely known for positively influencing LGBT history. Their Netflix short film is an upfront and compassionate look at palliative care and hospice through terminally ill patients, their families, and the medical practitioners who guide them through their end-of-life choices. It's called Endgame, and it's nominated for an Academy Award. Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman recently stopped by the studio. Dying is one of the two things that we all share in common. We're born and mm -hmm. we die. And it's the one thing we just, you know, we push away the unimaginable. It's the ultimate existential dilemma, right? We're, you know, we're here and then we're not here. So we do whatever we can to avoid thinking about it, talking about it, imagining it for ourselves. So here, you know, we found these practitioners who job, whose job it is day in and day out to help us with that, to help us through whatever suffering there might be involved in that experience for ourselves and our loved ones. Give me a sense of scale here. You chose two programs that are happening in San Francisco, a relatively progressive city in modern day America, right? What is the traditional form that most people end up dying in America today versus these options that seem pretty new and foreign to a lot of people that might be watching your documentary? Well, I mean, what we wanted to present is the, is the continuum of options mm -hmm. from being in a hospital and what a hospital what a hospital is designed to do if you're there at that point in your life which is all about treatment and and trying to keep you alive um, regardless of the circumstances um, the other end of the continuum is hospice where you're really there for that end of life experience and the the quality of care that you're given in, in that situation. So what we, what we do in the film is to present that continuum of choice. There's also a challenge that people have with physically letting go of the body, right? There's, a, there's all kinds of philosophical questions here. Is this the end? Is there a spirit? Is there a soul? What happens after I die? If I'm an organ donor, what's going to happen to my body or my daughter's body, right? It's just, there's a struggle here for on so many different levels that you witness that the families are going through. Yeah, and, and they're, they're difficult problems. They're the most, they could be the most difficult problems we'll ever face. And what, what really inspired us was watching these practitioners whose job it is really to help, help, help us work through these dilemmas and figure out what what options we want that would align with um, what we believe in. And that's different for each person. Yeah, I mean, as you said, because these practitioners are working, their job is within the, con within the context of terminal illness, all these issues come into play, psychological, emotional, sociological, all those issues around end of life come into play in their work. How, how much of the challenge here is about the patient themselves versus all the people around the patient that have their own issues about the, the psychological, the sociological, et cetera, right? I mean, it seems that sometimes it's harder for everyone else around the sick person to let go. Well, it's one system, and it's, it's one reason that the conversation is so important, that the people who are around you when you're facing the end understand and respect your wishes. Um, but that can only happen if there's, there's discussion about it. Palliative care is a whole team. So there's a physician, there's a social worker, there's a chaplain, there's an intern, and all of the team of palliative care workers work with the family as well as the patient. Mm -hmm. So all of that is part of the conversation that's going on with the whole team. And you also point out that different traditions deal with this differently. That it's, you know, there's kind of the mainstream American you know, putting people into a casket and burying them, but in between there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, letting go is a big part of the process. And, you know, it's one of, one of the aspects of the film that I think made it bearable was that there is, there, there's so much caring and love involved in both caring for patients and also letting go of loved ones. 
as really painful it is, as it is, the pain is something that comes from love. And feeling, feeling the love from families and also feeling the deep empathy and caring from the caregivers in these institutions that we were uh, filming in was really, in the end, very inspiring. One of the doctors in the film says, dying is not a medical issue, it's a human issue. And that's something that we all share, that we all have in common. At the end, what we hope for is that it's about human kindness and compassion and patience and, and love. I mean, that's what we all, all, all hope for. Well, what did it do to you now that you've finished the film? Did you rethink? Do you have a list of wishes? Did you guys clarify this? I mean, and, the, and <laughs> I definitely wrote an advance directive. You know, I made sure that, that everyone around me knows what I want and what I don't want. Um, but I think at a deeper level, it really made me, um, it, it gave me more of a relationship with death, which um, as something that's, that's a part of life, not as something scary to be run away from, but just something to, to look at with open eyes. The Oscar nod, are you expecting that? I mean, we weren't thinking about the Oscars until the nominations were announced. Right. But uh, now that's all we're thinking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rob Epstein, Jeffrey Friedman, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.